Disclaimer, classes in Trove are built very much the same, so if you have watched any of my other build guides, then there is quite a lot of things that will repeat itself, but you can bypass those parts by the timestamps in the description. Also, my guides are always updated, so if I was to stop doing YouTube, all my those guides would go away. No misinformation will be out there, and I will always update my videos slash guides. If something major happens to the game content, if something minor changes, it will be in the description. Hello guys! who here back on the video this time around we are doing a build guide for revenant yeah so the intro is going to be very much the same as if you've seen it before you can skip ahead to maybe the demo or something else but yes the intro is going to be different just with the which class we are going to do basically just telling you if this is your first time watching one of these build guides what you can expect from the video so as you can see right here i did make it into chapters also indicated by uh, timestamps which is in the description or on the video and first we are going to start with a five minute demo just showcasing the class what abilities do it have kind of just showing off not going into detail what they basically do but just showing them off and maybe that will interest you at making one of these classes one of your mains after that we are going to do a quick look at overall stats for the every single class so for this class that you're watching right here we're going to do it for that one and also in general we are going to talk about stats for example like crit hit and crit damage that's going to be some generalization right there and then we are going to move into gear and everything there's on the gear page that is of course banners, allies, head, face, weapon <laughs> and also rings and food, emblems, flasks, so on, so on. Everything there is in the gear uh, page, we are going to go over that one as well. Then we are going to cover gems. Mostly we're going to cover the empowered gems, of course. We're also going to talk a little bit about the smaller ones, but mostly we are going to go into the big empowered ones, or the big gems, that is. And then for lastly, of course, as you can see right here on the screen, we're also going to talk about the star chart or the talent tree, as I basically call it. So that's what the intro was all about, just letting you know what the chapters are and how it is going to work with the timestamp. So you can skip ahead if there's something you already watched. You can skip ahead to doing that, or you can basically uh, watch it all if you feel like you want to do that. But that was the intro, now we can jump into the demo.
All right, let's take a deeper dive into the Revenant. So it's not really a super bossing class. It's not really a farming class. Then what is the Revenant? Revenant is kind of a tank. You can build it for sure. You can build it a tank. You can just go health, but uh, it doesn't really do that much uh, for you know your group play as a uh, Revenant. You probably just rather have it as a DPSer, and it's quite nice as a DPSer. It's one of the best melee physical damage characters there's and I'm, I'm emphasizing on the uh, melee because the best physical damage character is the, the shadow hunter but it used uh, used to be the revenant before they reworked the shadow hunter and gave it uh, much more damage uh, maybe the revenant is gonna you know be better uh, or uh, overtake the shadow hunter again if it gets a rework at some point it doesn't really need it i feel like the kit on the uh, or the abilities on the Revenant is really much on a point. So what are you really going to use it for? Well, you can still use it as a bosser. Again, you can use it. It doesn't really shine very much as a, a you know, as a dungeon uh, farming class. There's just a lot of other classes that do that. But it's I feel like it's pretty nice to actually just jump in and use your number one ability and just have that spears that are going to uh, deal a damage. But let's talk more about that and how you are going to kind of counteract the cost of the spear as right here you can use if you are going to use uh, you know the revenant as mostly as a bossing character that was what i would use it for if i was a main on it uh, you definitely need the class gym and i'll talk about that in a little bit but let's talk about the passive the passive every time you do base attacks you are going to heal so you kind of want some attack speed but you don't want to go overboard with the attack speed either uh, it's it's not crazy. You really want it. You do kind of want the. If you can see here, I'm actually going to move slower when I actually use my spears. So, it, a moving speed is also pretty nice. But as a bossing character, you're not going to move around very much. Uh, but you are going to be pretty slow. But you definitely want the attack speed as well. But when I say don't go overboard with the attack speed, you don't have to. Basically, when you get something like, for example, a hat or something like that, if it has like right this as I have right here, it has magic uh, or critical damage is absolutely necessary is 100 necessary but if it's at the third stat or second stat whatever it has movement speed in this case just use it uh, or you can of course go for attack speed if you really want to get even more uh, you know uh, attack speed and hit that faster but basically you, whenever you basic attack you are going to get some of that health back also it gets a debuff so that's actually pretty nice to take uh, the boss or the enemies are going to take five percent more uh, damage from your auto attack not from your ability that's from uh, this one as well and then of course lastly you do have an extra health you have basic guardian angel or whatever you say so you can basically die once and then there's going to be a popping up a little guy and that's going to also help your dps but uh, that's only like a, i don't know what the cooldown is on it you can probably find that on the wiki but uh when this one is gone there is a cooldown on it before you can use it uh, or it, it triggers again but if you have death defying that's an, something extra as well that will actually trigger first before it triggers uh, this one as well so uh the bulwark is basically uh you damage uh, you know enemies in a cone you basically do this you can see it right here and you might wonder wondering why does mine not have any cooldown it's because i have the uh, clash gym it, it does still do the taunt i actually thought if they removed the taunt when you put on the clash gym but i think they changed that uh, in a while back and i think or maybe it's just something in my mind that it's just some place i thought i think uh you know i uh, you know had in my mind but it taunts basically when you hit enemies it taunts them uh, to hit you as well but also it, uh, it gets a damage over time so uh, and the damage over time does not leech uh, life uh, they might have some interactions with the, uh, you know, vampiric and stuff like that, that maybe bypasses that, but you shouldn't really rely on the damage over time being something you are going to ability or do damage to. You basically, you know, you can't use your number one ability and then use this one as well and an auto attack. You can see, I can't, re I, I can either choose one or the other, right? So I can't really just do one or the other as that one. Actually, I could actually take some damage here and I should... Uh, have that guy actually spawn the gun the guy that we actually had there we go there is the guy that you actually saw there that's the guy that actually spawns when you actually you know should have died instead and there's like a cooldown on it as I 
just sad. So yeah, they basically taunts enemies in a cone, and you know, with the clash gym, if you really want a bossing, the damage over time is pretty awesome to do that extra damage. You can wheel it in like that, and then you know, hit hit with some abilities, and then do it again. Uh, you no, know, there's no cooldown on it, so you can't. But uh, you, you can't really stack up the damage over time, so you kind of want to wield it in sometimes, and then kind of like that. It's kind of like, do keep the spears up. You can see the spears here. It drains your life. That's why you want to auto attack. So basically what you want to do is use like this. And yes, because I'm not hitting any enemies right now, you can see I'm still draining my life, but I would get all this life back when I was actually, you know, hitting things. So basically have your spears on, wield in the bulwark sometimes, and then keep out to attacking. And then if you have more enemies, you of course you can have, of course, have your ultimate, but it does cost you 20% uh, of your life. So just keep that in mind when you start sucking things in or you are taunting things as well. Uh, you actually are going to, you know, uh, get some aggro with that and actually get hit by that as well. I can see I have some sort of effect around me. I don't play the Revenant that much, but I'm pretty sure the effect around me there, what might be actually, what is this one? So I'm actually gonna try to kill myself again to see if I won't work this time around and we will carry on with the abilities. I just wanna make sure you guys know what you guys are getting into. So here is the thing. Let's see if I die, I uh, didn't die. And you can see I still have the effect around here. Uh, I do have a helmet on here and see it actually smokes up here is because my helmet I have the pinata one that because I then it look kind of looks like I have a head on it So I think that's a cooldown. I think that's the interaction you can see until this is gone I that's when you are actually able to die again, but you can see it also did the death defying at the same time uh, I don't know which one procs first, but uh, it, uh, Basically, uh, it's gonna work uh, at least at one. So yeah, that was actually all our abilities uh, you can see right here also exploded do some damage of course with the ultimate so you can of course pop this uh, while you're also using your spears and whatnot but let's talk about subclasses here we got the subclasses you can go with many of the different subclasses the ones two i recommend is of course the knight or the actually the lunar lancer the lunar lancer i would 100 percent recommend if you are not uh, farming very much if you're only using for killing bosses because the damage reduction you do get from this and the damage and every attack speed all that stuff from the lunar lancer is just amazing also 750 uh, physical damage is not uh, too bad either with of course the uh, knight you actually get more flash charges and then you can proc some of your emblems and stuff like that but you can go with many of the other classes as well if you want to feel you want to do so. The Salarian is pretty nice as well. As I always say, you can go with any class you really want to. Uh, but I do have some recommendations on what you can go for. But it basically comes down to mostly... Uh, what you have, you know, leveled up the most, what have the highest level or has the most power rank as well, kind of goes hand in hand. But usually the one you should use there, unless it's like something like, uh, I would maybe crit hit. If you have all the crit hit you need, for example, then you should even, you know, maybe your Tomb Razor is the highest you have. Sure, it's great, but maybe you should kind of look into one other class, maybe into the Lunar Lancer or the Knight. Knight is a starting class, so it should be kind of easy to get up to that level 30 and one you actually already unlocked or pretty can lock on from uh, unlock very early on, that's what I mean. So with that said, these are my recommendations. Solarian uh, is really nice as well, but I don't recommend it very much because it's not too easy to come by. So usually these two, uh, you know, Lunar Lancer. Lunar Lancer is a little bit harder than the Knight, but the Knight is super easy to get. So that's why I recommend the Knight mostly because for newer players, you know, unlocking the Knight is not very hard. And then you have a subclass and subclass is not super important, but they, they are kind of nice to have as well. So. Uh, moving on, we are going to talk about our uh, gear on the page right here. We're going to talk about our hat. As you can see here, I went with critical damage and movement speed. Again, it could have been attack speed as well. You can see this is my attack speed. You can see this is sort of what my attack speed is. Uh, I can also show you the stats in a minute. Uh, but you can see that's my attack speed right here. You can see it right here. That's I have 187%. Uh, so you can see, okay, that's how fast he's going to attack. And if I get more attack speed, you know, that is how my, uh, you know, uh, attacks are going to be. And uh, so again, you can use the movement speed. Again, you get slowed down, you use the spears. So if you are farming, uh, I would go for more with the movement speed because uh, usually small enemies are more... Uh, agility if you can see like or agile and they move around a little bit more than bosses do so 
you would kind of have some movement speed. That would what I would go for as instead of an attack speed. But attack speed is nice as well. You can always use your mount to get to where you want and then like be right on top of the enemies and or use your ultimate to pull them all in and just hit your spear with that as well. And uh, you, and then I went with some uh, max health because you know, I want to be a little bit tankier. Uh, I could go with some other stuff here if you want. It really doesn't matter what the third stat is. As long as you get critical damage is the one that you cannot go away from. That's the only thing you really have to look for. That's the critical damage. Uh, again, movement speed, attack speed is optional. Here we go with the movement speed. I also went with magic find here. That's also an option. But again, I went with movement speed and I went with the critical damage as well for my spear. So again, you can go with anything you really want. You can also go with crit hit if you're missing some of it. Uh, but it's really up to you. I'm not really going to boss on this character. There's no really tanking. I wish there were in Trove. I wish there was the, you know, the trifecta, the healer, the damage dealer and the tank. I wish there were that in Trove because it is an MMO. But yeah, we don't have that. We just have damage dealers and damage dealers and damage dealers. So <laughs> that is what we are going to have right here. And then of course we have again the uh, face, uh, getting critical damage. Here you do have to have the physical damage you can't really go anything else unless you want to be just a no damage tank and just absorb a bunch of stuff but usually that damage is something you need for your team so i would go again with the physical damage here and again with the movement speed again you could go with some attack speed but as you can see i don't have any attack speed and i have that sort of attack speed i have so much attack speed that sounds kind of weird to say but i don't really have any attack speed anywhere here uh, even though i still have uh, this one as well i don't of course you cannot get attack speed on any of your gems either so this is this attack speed that i have right here is all from just like dragons and uh, other places as well as some uh, so forth i did go for a physical damage ring here you can go with many things you really want here you can go with critical hit if you are missing some of it play around with it uh, magic magic find usually is the best one you can get or jumps could also be something if you're really missing jumps ring is a nice place to get some jumps as well if you're missing some because you know at start in the start you basically don't have any you have two jumps in the beginning um and then you really just want to get yourself uh you know this here uh ring right with some jumps on it if you really want to do so but other than that it doesn't really matter too much just use the highest ring you get the most important here is either the magic damage if it's a magic damage user or physical damage character uh, for physical damage characters and then the light that's the mo most main most important things you can get on a uh, right here so but magic find is is a nice third option if you want to do so but play around with it and sometimes it's better to use a level one ring than a three if it has like if you're missing like critical hit or something like that you want to get that of course you want to get a u10 banner uh, that's one right here of course one with physical damage the other stats is really up to whatever you want there's also light on it you cannot change that but there's two other stats on it you can get flash charges or movement speed or whatever you feel like you want to again we're really not looking for that third or fourth stat if that doesn't really have a lot of impact on our build the mo most important thing is that you get a u10 banner from leviathans as well and then of course we got on ally and i of course i went with the ocean ocean is the one i went with over here you can't see it from my big uh, face but is it from paragon levels uh, there's also the ernie that's the one for uh i don't know why i have the uh, wrong one <laughs> i can see i have the wrong one okay that makes a lot of sense that's a, that's a mistake hey we we corrected ourselves of course you want ernie i was like i didn't i just saw the because it's the same thing <laughs> all right well that's 25 percent magic damage if you're a magic damage user and the same thing with the ernie that's what it is yeah i was missing 25 percent physical damage yeah but i still had the light so that was not a terrible thing as well well okay that gives uh well that's a little blunder from me so make sure you look at your you know what it actually is it's not just the 25 because that's what i usually just look at is oh it has 425 something and uh, <laughs> yeah i looked at the wrong thing as well there is some few ones as well from that that gives 25 physical damage for example the scorpio that is from the star chart i feel like that's a little bit hard to come by so that i don't i would recommend uh, this one i would recommend the scorpion if you can get access to it but it's really end game stuff so it's a lot easier to get the paragon one a lot lot easier yeah like you just need a couple of loops and then you can make this one here and it's really really nice these two are the ones i always recommend mostly uh because uh, these are just so much easier to get and that's that's the more most important thing uh, you can see i uh, well you probably yeah i really can see a little bit behind my uh, web camera here on my camera is that um and i don't have these either yet because i'm looking at something else i'm just kind of getting my whole star chart before i'm getting sort of all this and yeah 
it feels kind of how I kind of go for it. You can also go with the Rep Berserker if you are a little bit lower, but these are just so easy to get. I have a, in the description, I have like how to get all these allies and stuff. So it's just so much easier to get these, so much easier. So just, just go for these. <laughs> That's basically what I just can say about that. But let's talk about our flask. You can use the Death Defying if you want to. There's not really any other options. Of course, if you want more charges and stuff, but the, 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 um, stress level i guess you can call it just the how uh better it feels when you have to death defying just kind of overshadows all the other ones as well and yes the the uh the revenant is is not super bad at you know attack speed and stuff you can see the attack speed is pretty cool it's not amazing but the thing is uh because there is this one right here and i do want to say it, it when you have a critical hit uh when you do deal critical hit you have a chance of getting a charge back. So it's not like if you have 100% crit, your uh, yes, all your hits is gonna have a chance for it, but it's only still going to be a chance. It's not going to be a sure thing. So it's not like if this was a sure thing, I would probably recommend this one for all my you know builds because then you because you want to go for that 100% right. So I would recommend for this one. There's also the one that actually uh, recovers a charge when you have magic find, but you need about 8,000 magic find to rely really heavily on this one to actually get charges back when you actually thing kill things and stuff like that. The death defying is just so much better, and of course it's from the shop and it's in ink and currency, so it's super easy to come by as well. Death defying. It's not really other options. Uh, if people really want it for a while to have something else than a death defying, a death defying vial to actually be the you know one and all, and not really overshining all the other ones as well. So yeah, death defying just a solid option. Uh, you can go play around with whatever you want as well. But the emblems is way more important, and that of course is our old favorite, the arcane one, and also the uh, martial one. So this one, of course, we want the martial one because we want physical damage. And these are just god tier. These two, I say it in every single video, but I need to say it. Is the god tier emblem? Uh, there's nothing else. Uh, basically, slot number one is emblems. Uh, slot number two is more what you can play around with. You. For slot number one, you always want, well, you can also put it in a slot number two, it doesn't really matter, but the point is, for the one of the slots, uh, you want either, uh, you know, the physical damage one, or you want the magic damage one. That's like no other option you can really go for. But, so let's talk about the second option you can actually use. And there is the trailblazing, if you want to uh, have that one, that gives you some extra jumps and extra movement speed, if you really want to go a little bit faster, but you are reliant to use your flash charges. I went with the unwielding. The unwielding is uh, does say that it is from the uh, sh store, but it, sometimes it can actually be purchased from Luxian when he is in uh, our hub. Sometimes it is actually pretty. I think it's. I would say once a month or so. I feel like we have this one. It's pretty often we actually have this one, and I say pretty often. It on, on average, I would say once uh, once a month we have this one, or maybe actually like every third time that Luxian. So every say a month and a half or something like we have the unwielding uh, emblem and it's pretty nice because it gives a brief invulnerability shield when you actually prop this one so if you are getting hit by something big you uh, don't basically sometimes enemies hit you that fast that all your flash charges just like pop 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 all the time right uh, but this kind of prevents that from popping all the time because when the enemy then hits you, you're going to be invulnerable. So this basically every other attack that the enemy has, you are going to pop a flash. So basically you doubled your flash charges just by having this one. You can also go with some of the allies, but I feel like the UI is kind of like, hmm, not the UI, sorry, the AI of the allies are pretty... Uh, you are in range, you are in melee range, and usually that's a lot better than being ranged because does the because the the ally spawns where you are, and basically they don't have a lot of range. So uh, if the, if the boss moves kind of just a little bit, they actually have to reposition themselves, and of course you have to do that as well. But usually you have a lot more range than the uh, the allies has. So uh, I would definitely go with uh, the unwielding, or you can also go with the bountiful that actually has a chance to not consume. And that also is really great, but it this one being melee and you sort of being a little bit tangy, I would go with the unwielding instead and going with the bountiful. But the bountiful is pretty nice as well. It does have a chance to not consume a charge. And if you don't have a hundred percent critical hit, the sure strike emblem is pretty nice as well. Unless you have eighty percent and over, then you should avoid the sure strike for sure. 
no pun intended, but yeah, it's your strike uh, is, of course, gets less and less optimal as you get over 80% critical hit. So yeah, we covered everything here. Just you can play around with whatever ally you really want, but the only things that are really mandatory is, of course, these two that we talked about in the beginning. But let's talk about stats. Uh, you are a physical damage character, and now I have a little bit more physical damage character because I actually got the 25% extra. So you want to get as much physical damage as you can. And then you want, of course, uh, your attack speed. Again, you don't want to go overboard, but when you have every single dragon, this is where you are going to be approximately. So uh, again, I don't have any attack speed on any of my gears. So this is where you are going to end up at attack speed wise when you have all the dragons. So this is pretty, pretty nice. As you can see, my attack speed is pretty cool uh, or pretty cool. I mean, sufficient, sufficient. That's how you say it, sufficient. Uh, so yeah, just go with this one. Again, you can also go with some movement speed, but you do have to sacrifice some attack speed for that so it's really up to you what you want to do if you want to move a little faster if you don't want to use your mount as much really up to you what you want to do but what is not optional is the 100 critical hit as you uh, got here i'm at about 12 well almost 13 percent over so you want to hit right there on that 100 if you are at 99.9 percent and if you have to equip like a ring, for example, to, that gives you 6%, so you're way over, it's better to have that 99.9%. Uh, you will just want to get to closest to 100%. A little bit over is always better than a little bit under, but uh, usually uh, it, it's as close to 100% as you can get. And then you want to get as much critical damage as you can get, uh, as much physical damage as you can get, and then as much light as you also can uh, get. I did get a question not too long ago, and I just want to mention it. Uh, the Geode Mastery, if you get to 100, is going to give you 1000 light, just flat, just forever on all your classes. That's a really good place to get light as well, because you know you can get it on gear, but that's random, and you're going to get a good ring, when you're going to get good items and all that stuff, and good gems and all that stuff. But the, the Geode Mastery is just going to give you a flat, uh, 1000 light when you are at 100 level 100 as well so as much light as you can get as much critical damage as you can get uh critical damage or critical hit sorry critical hit at a 100 percent and then as much physical damage as you uh can as well and then lastly play around with movement speed play around with the attack speed if you feel like you can keep up your you know your spears all the time and not die with your auto attack as well lastly we are going to talk about our gems and for our gems we talked about the class gem so let's not cover that one as well but it's pretty mandatory if you are going to do bosses and not damage over time it's very nice indeed so i definitely uh, should uh, recommend you getting that one as well then you want uh, i did get a few <laughs> I, i'm having a few other ones that are really not really recommend but i would recommend in these two slots i would recommend the explosive explosive a gem it's just called explosive something uh and then also the pyro disc as well so explosive and pyro disc uh, no matter what color it is or what your class gem is but uh you want to go with the pyro disc and you want to go with the uh with the what's it called the again with the explosive that's the ones you want to get other than this one as well the stats you want to look for again is physical damage critical damage and critical hit and then you have to play around with the critical hit as well these are of course are not really perfect i can show you really quickly if i go to my dracolite here uh you can see i do have some with maximum health when you do get into these all gyms that i have are absolutely maxed out as they should be and some of them, as you can see here, I have more than one I have max health on because the max health, uh, because I have, if you see my stats right here, you can see I have 100.2%, so I'm 0.2% off being maxed, uh, you know, hitting exactly 100% critical hit. So then I have to turn some of these in because when you get the stats to 100% and such, then, uh, you know, uh, they basically become... Uh, way more critical hit than you actually need and these are all only 25 i do have all these 25 but they're not perfect on any of the stats and such if they are it's just a coincidence but you do want to look for the physical damage the critical damage is absolutely important that's the only thing you really have to look for uh, you, then you can play around with the critical hit but the critical damage and the physical damage is what uh, every single gem should have except for your cosmic ones i went with the barrier here you can also go with the berserker or the vampiric that's really up to you i don't really know what the interaction is with the vampiric 
uh, one if the spears like heals off that and stuff. But I went with the barrier because I want to take that less of uh, damage when I'm basically gonna be a, a tank, right? So, but you can also go with the battle berserker. The battle berserker is probably the best one you can get. The Vampiric is more for farming, I guess the same thing with the Barrier, or maybe the Barrier is a little bit more bossy, but the, the, the Battler is definitely the best one if you want to do as a main and want to do damage. Because you do get attack speed, you do get extra light, so that's really nice uh, for, you know, for keeping yourself alive, but also doing extra damage. And for these ones, you want uh, physical damage, you want the light, light is the stat you cannot remove that one, and also critical uh, damage and physical damage, that's what I'm saying. And you want to put all your extra points, if you know what that is, I talked about it in some of the gyms, I have talked about it a bunch of times, but the extra boost, you get a 5, 10, and 15, you want to move all those into light, no matter uh, your gems, just put them all into the light stat right here. You can reroll the physical damage on it, uh, but you cannot do anything besides that. So, but you want to use those extra boost, uh, the extra little boosty boosts uh, into the light. Move them all into light. Uh, you don't usually. It doesn't really matter where you have your boost. Otherwise, on the other gems, except for on the critical hit or whatever stat you then have, if it's like flat uh, max health or percentage max health, you want to have your boost. It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, there is some min-maxing you could do, uh, you can play around with that, but as long as they're not on the critical hit, you are actually pretty uh, golden. I don't have that on my Dracoline, and you can see it's 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 where it needs to be in, in case of, uh, if you wanted to know. But yeah, there is some min-maxing stuff, you can find that all over the internet as well. If you really want to go into the min-max, I'm kind of more just having people not be discouraged if they like, hey, I don't do much damage, well, maybe you should put more in, have you put all your boost into that one or uh, versa, uh, versa as well. But that's also gems, as I said, the, the basically the best battle berserker here, the clash gem, the pyro disc, and then the explosive is what you wanna go for for all of these. So yeah, we covered basically everything there is with the Revenant. The Revenant is pretty cool class. We'll see in the future if it gets a rework and actually gets a damage boost. So maybe it will overtake the Shadow Hunter again. But it is it is the best melee uh, class there is. Uh, physical damage that is physical damage melee class there is in Trove and. Um, it really comes up to you if you really want to play this class. It's a pretty cool class as well. But we're not done yet. We do have to cover the star chart for physical damage. And it's coming up right here. All right, so now we got the physical damage part. I don't know if you saw the magic damage one, but the um, physical damage one looks very much like the magic damage part because this over here, you got, of course, still the critical damage, which there's a lot of great notes over here. You do have to spend one point right here, which gives some magic damage to get into here, which I think is a little silly, but that's just basically how it is. But there's a great, a lot of great physical damage notes going through up here. There is a little bit of a note out here. I was kind of debating with myself if you should get out here because it is a lot of points again going out here. Uh, but it does give you 5% ma magic damage and physical damage. But yeah, it's not super great out here. And that's the same thing if you saw the magic damage part. The green ones means that they're okay notes out here, but you really don't want to go for them because you can see there's many notes in going in there. So it's not really necessary. You can see the other ones, the, the red ones are sort of like more clumped together, which means that they're just really, really great. And my my idea with this was that you go through the magic damage part and then, or critical damage part, and then the, oh, well, you can go for the physical damage part first, and then of course the magic, the, or the critical damage part, and then you can go either this way or this way down here. So these sort of the, things I would definitely go for a physical damage character, go through the physical damage, critical damage, uh, and then out here with the light, there's a little bit of light, good light notes out here. Um, again, also kind of a nice note here, you don't have to go very far, but it gives a little bit of critical damage, but other than that, you don't have, you don't want to go further through this. There are some nice flask notes, but yeah, flask is not like a permanent, I just feel like the permanent buffs are just a little bit better. Uh, because it's gonna give you all the time. So if you don't have any flash charges, you know it's not gonna give you the same. So I, I'd rather go for some 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 you know hard facts or hard stats if you can say it like that. So yeah, this is the physical damage part. Again, you can parse the video if you want to see which ones you want to go for. Uh, again, it's just my opinion on which ones you should you know be a, at least be aware of. That's it for the video. Click the video on screen that's coming up right now. YouTube thinks you might like it. Also check out the description for all my ultimate guides that goes into more specific things in Trove. And also hit that like button would help me out very very much. Also consider subscribing and that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!